Why does Santa carry around such a big sack? Ooh, why does he? Because he only comes once a year. Ah, god damn. <laughs> it's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, we're covering Brazil Comic Con CCXP with tons of trailers in my favorite Mm -hmm. section of the show, which we call the Trailer Park. Yes. Um, With Wonder Woman. That's our newest one. Hot off the internet presses. Mm-hmm. They, someone pressed publish is what we mean <laughs> when we say that. Uh, Black Widow teaser that was with this week and some more information from that. Uh, Amazon's The Boys trailer leaked as well this week for season two <laughs> and more. Yes, uh, uh, pra- all praise the old gods and the new gods for Wonder Woman dropping in the afternoon for the most part. Because usually I feel like if there's a trailer debut on Sunday, it's usually during some sort of sporting event. So it's like hours after we've recorded. So uh, I think we we, uh, we scheduled today out, so we'll record a, once the trailer drops. Because I would feel like a fool if we put out a podcast without talking about but Wonder Woman. Especially because we knew it was coming. It's not like it was a surprise this time. They, mm-hmm. they were like teasing it out a little bit like it's gonna be here it's gonna be brazil watch it live on twitter or something like yeah. that and I was like, you know i think this i think this brazil comic-con is a thing for two different reasons i'm sure the south american market is a big growing market for movies and superheroes and all that so it's a good kind of just strategical uh, place to go to uh, but also, this is probably like one of the last times during the year you get to put stuff out before, you know, Hollywood kicks back into gear. And uh, usually that's not until like sometimes like the end of January, I feel like really things don't kick back in. So I feel like we're getting like this final dump of 2019 in a good way. Not a bad dump. It's a good dump. Yeah. I mean, we are, like I said, it's, it's December. We are uh, less than two weeks away from Star Wars. We've got some Star Wars news to even talk about. Uh, it's just what I mean. What what do we have to look forward to? What's the next movie after Star Wars, Mike? Do we do we even know off the top? Of our head? Is it Birds of Prey that we're kind of? No, I mean, I was um, I was kind of looking at the Disney Plus schedule because you know we kind of talk about Mandalorian here or there. We might do a, a final wrap up once the series or the season uh, finishes uh, in a couple weeks. Um, but once Mando is done. They don't really have any big, like, kind of nerdy releases until Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is fall next year. Mm-hmm. So I'm really curious what Disney is going to be doing uh, for, like, the first, like, three quarters of, uh, you know, They don't have to do anything. They got us for three years, Mike. We, yeah, we're, yeah, we're they suckers. Are- they already got us, so that'll be interesting, especially since, you know, May we're going to be seeing HBO Max dropping, and I don't know if we've heard any news of HBO Max dropping with brand new content, like a big flagship show when it debuts, maybe the prequel Game of Thrones series. I don't know how far along that is. But... Uh, no, they're going to put that on the live <laughs> stuff. They need those subscribers, too. But this doesn't uh, this doesn't usually pop up in our uh, in our show notes, but we talk about Quibi every once in a while. Quibi's reviving Reno. 911 oh lord which i think is awesome uh it's it's hard to go out and find it because it's not streaming anywhere i think it's i think there's some weird studio rights with it even though it was on comedy central i don't think it can really be easily streamed without negotiating some deals but quibi is going to be the mobile only like 10 minute episode mini chunk streaming service so i think reno 911 would work really well on that service because each episode of that show if you don't know it's basically like a parody of cops so it's just filled up a b- of a bunch of different segments. So they could just put like one or two segments together, mm-hmm. and that would be an episode on Quibi. So I mean, I'm I'm gonna give Quibi a shot just um, even before I heard about Rihanna nine one one. But we, you got two streaming services uh, dropping in kind of like a Disney Plus lull. So I'm well, curious what's gonna happen next year. What, what the best part of uh, Quibi is, um, I'm just gonna watch it on YouTube when it comes out because <laughs> that's gonna be the quickest way that happens there. Um, cause I don't definitely don't want to watch it on my phone if I could, uh, do that. But yeah, I mean, uh, they seem to be, I, I saw something else about them the other day, but that wasn't the Reno 911, but I'll end up talking about it at work. But, 
Uh, in, in the meantime, though, we are in prime streaming season for holiday movies and films and other stuff. Like your favorite Christmas movie, Mike, which is definitely Iron Man three. I know Iron Man <laughs> is my favorite Christmas movie. Uh, I for, I keep forgetting that is around the holidays, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then um, you know you know like so we talked about Disney Plus had Home Alone movies the other day. I haven't watched those in a hot minute, so uh, definitely probably put those on. But um, what what I, what Christmas movies would you recommend to some people that you've watched lately? Well, well, obviously, the Santa Claus one with Tim Allen, which is on Disney Plus, it's a classic. But I, in my right mind, have never gotten around to watching the sequels, and I was totally okay with that. But we had some time to fill this weekend, and uh, the wife and I decided to get a little inebriated under the influence, and we're like, let's watch the Santa Claus too. So maybe the first act of the Santa Claus two is entertaining, but once the uh, once the uh, the mind altering substances wore off, uh, it was no good. So Santa Claus 2 is really freaky Wait. and kind of scary so, so <laughs> at the beginning. What, what happens with this one? Oh. Because I know I've only seen one in three in stores. And three is the one that they oh get crossed with. Um, I, I can't name the actor's name. Um, Martin uh, Short. Martin Short, yeah. In the second one, there's some crazy elf contraption that is apparently already exists where you can either enlarge shrink or duplicate things so santa has to like go back home to like parent his son so they duplicate santa in this machine but he's duplicated as a toy but so they put like this weird like um, latex beard onto tim allen to make him look like a toy and he just looks terrifying and then later the toy clones toy soldiers and there's a part in the movie where he dresses like a freaking like dictator he's in like this black leather uh suit with all of these creepy like kind of like uh, suppressive badges all over it. it's very weird very strange i wouldn't recommend it unless you're with a bunch of friends and under the influence uh but the, just out of curiosity I had to check out santa claus too but the sleeper hit which i had avoided for an entire year was the christmas chronicles which came out last year on netflix so i don't have you seen this movie Chris? i have not I, i'm i'm familiar with it though it is the um what's his name I, I'm, kurt russell kurt russell and his wife is in it too right yeah, she she shows up uh, towards the end of the flick. It's kind of more of a it's more of a cameo, if you will. Right, because I saw uh, a poster for the second one today. Yes, that was uh, that was eventually what I was gonna uh, yeah. weave into here. Uh, but the Christmas Chronicles, I avoided because I saw the trailers last year. It's produced by Chris Columbus, not directed by it. So they put from the people that brought you Harry Potter in the trailer, blah blah blah. And I was just like, ah, oh, this just looks like another dumb direct. Uh, uh, direct to streaming Netflix movie trying to cash in on Christmas. How did they get Kurt Russell roped into this? I just ignored it. So, you know, over the past year, I feel like I've heard some good things about it. So it's Christmas time again. Need something to watch. Wife and I sat down with some uh, Christmas snacks and treats and watched it, and we were shocked. It is very good. It's very thought out. It's very thoughtful. The beginning is kind of slow. You know, you get to know the family before you jump into the adventure. The actors are very good. Um, the special effects are are halfway decent, especially if you compared the very creepy kind of CG reindeer you've seen in other Christmas movies. These in this movie kind of look somewhat realistic and it's funny. Kurt Russell is great. He has just a really cool Santa look to him too. Like he's kind of got like a leather Santa suit, but it's not shiny. It's just kind of like, it looks, it just has a really good set design to it. Um, the elves are a little strange. I won't spoil what the elves look like, but they're a little okay. off putting. Uh, but, uh, they, I, I think it would have been cool maybe if there was some like live live action puppetry with the elves but I guess you know you got to do what you can with your budget but uh, I was happy to see that there's gonna be a sequel and I think the biggest news out of the sequel is I just said Christopher Columbus produced the first one but I guess he likes this uh, franchise now enough he's stepping in and the dude that has directed several Harry Potter movies is stepping up to the plate and is going to direct the sequel to the Christmas Chronicles which uh, circles right back around to the Santa Claus 2 where the Santa Claus 2 and 3 are just incredibly inferior to the first one and this could be a situation where maybe we get a Christmas sequel that's possibly better than the first you know I think maybe Home Alone 2 might be the only contender in my mind of uh, a sequel that could maybe contend with the original uh, so yeah go check out Christmas Chronicles on Netflix I highly recommend it you'll actually have a really good time okay well, you're setting yourself up for failure for hoping a sequel is better than the first one. You know <laughs> who, who's counting? Who's counting here? Um, we did have a recommendation on YouTube. i got to pull this up by one of our listeners. What would you call our eating section? 
Uh, oh yeah, the the top of the show. What are you watching? And what are you? Eating? Yeah, what are we watching? What are you eating? And he said, "Call it uh, Snack Watch." And I'm like, "That's a pretty good name." Um, but the, <laughs> well, so we got we got we got segments like we got Snack Watch, we got Mike's Anime Corner, mm-hmm. uh, Chris's Steam Broccoli. We're, we're, we're really fleshing out this show after 250 episodes. Yeah, well, 252, we really hit that stride, you know, recently. Uh, but I, I've got to <laughs> say, I tried the. Uh, I don't think I said last week the Holiday Brew Mountain Dew that's out there um, this week because mm-hmm. it, it's like 300 calorie plus a bottle, and I'm like, I can only do this whenever I'm like, in, in, I've got to prep my day around this drinking this this bottle <laughs> of calories. Uh, it's got cranberry and pomegranate in it. I'm not a huge fan of that flavor, but if you like a holiday mm-hmm. cranberry pomegranate taste, you might enjoy this Mountain Dew flavor. So I just wanted oh, to toss that out there. So it sounds like we're in the what are you eating and what are you drinking section of, yeah. of the time. I, I of the don't show. have anything. I didn't. I didn't watch anything this week. Uh, entertaining. Um, I, I played some Pokemon Sword. Uh, really, so I, I can't say I've, I've done a whole lot. And then yesterday I played what was it six seven hours of Axis and Allies and um, uh, what well, well, was a board game, right? Board, board game. Game. Yes. Uh, it, <laughs> Emphasis it, on the board. Yeah. I, it's comparable to Risk, but I like Risk more because it moves quicker. Um, mm-hmm. But that's that's me. But I did pick up, I have not opened it yet, uh, late last night, the Marvel Champions Living Card Game. Um, and living Card Game? What's this? So we have played, you and I have played Legendary before, right? Uh, yes. We, we actually mm-hmm. said I want to play like four or five one day over Christmas. Yeah, that game's very fun. It is fun. But the problem with it was we have you have to pick characters and build this mix-match deck of these characters, right? Only five. Mm-hmm. In the living card game, you pick a character, and that's usually the ones you play with. So it's a quicker pickup and put down time. Mm-hmm. And the living portion of it means they release stuff like every month for this, like a new hero pack and a new you know villain pack and new scenarios. So it's not more like I'm waiting quarterly to add five characters that I might use one of them once every five years. Uh, mm-hmm. But this this will add more heroes. But this only comes with five to begin with. So. It, it's I'm very excited it had great reviews listen to the show Patrick you met Patrick at my wedding uh, he he recommended it um, you know he sends reviews to me I finally was able to pick it up this week so I'm excited to, to dive into that this week uh, as we here in the Midwest get into uh, 20 degree temperatures and darkness at 4 p.m. so <laughs> uber yeah I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled I'm thrilled thrilled about it so uh, what what else Mike anything else this weekend you did I don't I don't think we some movies in theaters nothing like that I mean I think this is the the first time in a couple of le- weeks where I think we actually got a pretty decent show here with at least uh, some exciting news so I think we should jump into it yes first things first we are filming this on Sunday as is mm-hmm. tradition Mike and on Sundays uh I believe it's is it Supergirl that airs on Sundays now on CW. I believe I believe so. Um, and with that, this week we get the first episode of the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover on CW. So if you uh, are watching any of these shows, you're probably well aware of this. If you are not, like me and Mike, we're probably just going to watch this little um, crossover event because it seems huge. It seems ginormous. Uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be their biggest one they've ever done. It's it's uh, pitched as kind of ending uh, Oliver Queen's story, who mm-hmm. kicked off the whole Arrowverse. Uh, I think they write this in mind, knowing that they're going to have lots of people jumping in that don't usually jump in, probably with the with the hope that they hook them maybe to stick with one yeah. of the shows. Uh, but you know, I have I have a base knowledge of the universe, so I don't really have to keep up with the shows as much to kind of jump into the crossovers. But I will be watching these this week, uh, Chris. I hope you watch them too, and uh, I think we should come back next weekend well, kind of talk about this crossover. Here's the problem with that: I can't I can't in good faith do that because. There are three episodes this week, and the next two are in January to wrap this whole event up. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. The next two, are those going to be like Arrow episodes or something? So it goes um, ba- uh, Supergirl, Batwoman, The Flash. Black Lightning mm-hmm. is not considered a tie-in episode. Uh, and then it will be Arrow, and then the last episode is Legends of Tomorrow in January of uh, 14th and 15th. Yes. So that's that seems a little strange. It's a little weird in my book, and um, you know, I'm like, why would they wait almost a month, uh, over a month, to, to to give us the last two episodes? I mean, mm. is it the effects? Is it the emotional resonance of Arrow ending? And they want people to tune in next next, you know, on the mm. quote unquote spring season. 
Uh, you know what? The the wife and I, we have some connections over there at, at the studio. Uh, we know some people that work on these shows. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna reach out and see what's going on over there because it's very strange. It's the first I've heard of it. You yeah. know, They've always been pitching these crossovers as week-long events. In my mind, what I think is going to be, it seems like to me we're getting like the bulk of the story and then maybe there just be some lingering effects in, pre, in other episodes is kind of what it seems like to me. Uh-huh. Well, um, like, may, like I, w- I would think maybe they'll beat the big bad by the end of this week, and then like some characters may die or transform, and then you're still dealing with the effects like in January. That would be my guess. I mean, I, I don't know simply because I don't see. I mean, I think we might get you know there, this is a cameo thing. I mean, you've got what Tom Welling Superman showing up. You've got um, Brandon Ruth playing another Superman. Kevin Conroy playing his first live action Batman, other than just. E- Chris, I demand to see Oliver Queen dead by the end of the week, okay? You're not going these to. Are, He's got one more episode left in January, the, so... These are my demands. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, we can maybe talk about it, you know, after these these air this week, but, I mean, this is a really weird setup for watching a five-part series, so... Uh, yeah, the, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to uh, uh, to fill any, fill everyone back in next week. Yeah. There, I just want to get that out of the way, because I know that was, that was happening today, this week. All right. Brazil Comic Con CCXP. I don't know what this stands for. I say it all the time. I've looked up so many articles this week. I've just pretty much gone blind to it. Uh, it is wrapping up today. Uh, it's I think they're on the same time zone we are, as you said. So, uh, but they've, they've there's been Marvel panels. There's been Star Wars panels. There's been DC movies panels, and and so much more. I actually looked it up geographically. This is even better for us because uh, they're shifted a little bit more easternly. So I think they're two hours ahead of you. So they're like five hours ahead of me. Wow. So you know if they have something going on even even in the evening, you would be uh, you would be getting it like you know mid afternoon. I'd be getting it around lunch. So it's just a great it's just a great way for news to disseminate just right in the middle of the day for us. Yeah, and you know the stuff has kind of been really interesting because a lot of it has been live streamed as well as on a very secretive panel if you will mm-hmm. uh except for some of the, the footage and stuff like that but uh, I, i'm very excited to talk about it. I'm, the first thing i'm going to talk about which i'm really really surprised he did is kevin feige had a whole panel down there and they filmed it and it's online for you to watch so you can watch this interview with kevin feige at at, at ccxp right here in our show notes and go click on it and watch it um, Man, this is like a six, seven hour video. There, there must must be a couple interviews in here. Then yeah, there's several. But where I think the the time code where I started is that it got the right time code, I believe. Mm, for, yeah, for I don't Game know. Feige. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, if not, I'll have to go pull up because I have I've because he starts at like four hours in or something like that. So I have uh, okay, to pull gotcha. it. I'll fix it before we end. But anyway, he said the multiverse will be the next step in storytelling for the MCU. Hmm. That okay. That's interesting because I kind of thought the multiverse was just going to be more of a threat that would be wrapped up in Doctor Strange's movie. Like, oh my God, this whole multiverse is starting to rip open and it's going to destroy everything we know. We gotta, we gotta zip this, nip this in the bud, and then Doctor Strange and Wanda would come together, do some badass magic, and fix it. But if he says this is going to be a major counterpoint. Uh, maybe we're going to see some alternate versions of characters Mm -hmm. or maybe this, maybe the next phase or the next steps, because Feige has said before that these phases are not going to be as long as they were before. So maybe this multiverse thing only exists for about two, two and a half years. And then we move on to the next thing. Yeah. It it could be the phase. I mean, you know, maybe at the end, this could be their crisis on infinite or Mike, if you will, uh, where they're, they're all dealing with multiple versions or multiple not of themselves, but of villains coming through things like that of the universes, and that's what they're they end up working with uh, or fighting against and coming together at the end of this whole thing. Um, kind of like again, Crisis on Infinite on Infinite uh, Earth, if you will. So that was one big thing uh, that they they talked about there. Um, but also the Master Phase Four crossover plan is well underway for a lot of these characters we've we've been talking about. Oh, that's cool. Also, because I think the last time Feige mentioned this, he kept kind of like, I I would say like downplaying. He's trying to manage everybody's expectations, it seemed like. Like, hey, 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 you're probably not going to get a big like endgame type thing again. If not, you know, if we do, it'd be a long time away. So it does seem like they're putting something together. So that's great. Yeah. And he's got a plan. We all know he's got a plan. Everybody calm down. He's doing his plan. And also the great thing is, is he's, he's earned nothing but goodwill. 
over this last decade. So it's like, as of right now, we can we can all trust them. Yeah. If it was a different studio, a different person, we'd probably be a little bit more cynical about it. But so far, I mean, everything I've seen, I've been pretty happy. Yeah. You, even the idea of, of multiple dimensions uh, was introduced in Endgame. So we've got mm-hmm. that. He also, uh, they did an in- Eternals section uh, panel. Uh, and, and the footage was, the, there's some description of the footage. I cannot find a leak of it anywhere in our photos, but yeah, they usually make white a week or something to do this. Um, but Druig is the leader of the Deviants, which is their evil counterparts. So we've talked about this, the Eternals mm-hmm. versus the Deviants. But this is, uh, the, the Deviants in the movies are, a, as Kevin Feige said, a new form of Deviants, unlike anything we've seen in the comic books. So you're saying that they might not necessarily kind of look like Thanos or have that chin ridge? Yeah, or they could be, uh, yeah, they're, whatever they're going to do is, is, is brand new, and they're just using the okay. name kind of thing, is what hmm. it sounds like. All right. All right, this has been another installment of Mike tries to understand the Eternals. That's fine, but I think this this made me think here on a, on a broader note. Maybe the deviant gene on Earth brings birth to the X Men later mutations. Oh, maybe. Um, okay, I could I could see that being a possibility. I mean, something's got to mess up the human DNA at some point in time for us to get the X Men in here. Yeah, and you know maybe maybe it was latent in something Eternals kicks off you know the deviants it's a dormant gene and it, it kicks off as mutations i don't know but like they talk about you know eternals and, and deviants being deviants having the mutated gene so i, th- I thought that'd be an interesting x-men you know um uh, what, what's the word we look for here conspiracy theory that we pitch every month so uh, <laughs> one of those uh there was a kumail nanjiani dance number in a bollywood style kind of thing going on there because he plays all right, that all right <laughs> uh selma hayek is poised to be kind of the leader of these eternals and she had several quotes about well we must protect these people probably was talking about the inhuman or the humans uh and then like charging into to battle at one point it looked like or riding a horse yeah. so all right okay look we're getting a lot more selma hayek than i anticipate i thought we get more angelina jolie but uh-huh. selma hayek's probably probably leader here um, Feige also confirmed that the Eternals know about the Avengers when this movie takes place. So uh-huh. we'll see what's going on there. It will span 7,000 years, a little over. Wow. That's a, that's a lot of history. That's why they're Eternals. They last a while. Uh, and the Celestials, this is my favorite part, will be featured in full true power, not just teases and glimpses of, of Eternal or Celestials anymore. So we're going to see some wow. Celestials in, in their big robot looking. Forms. All right, this this sounds like this is going to uh, explain a lot of this the MCU that we don't know. Like we've just gotten little glimpses of the Celestials, like you said, um, span seven thousand years. That's a lot of time to cover. So yeah. um, this seems like it's really going to flesh out the the universe. Well, it's going to set some things in stone, probably that we have to we we may pay off later, or we may refer back to at another point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, you know again we have Kit Harrington as the Black Knight in there somewhere. But speaking of the Avengers, uh, I thought this was really cool. They um, uh, Marvel has released the full script online for Endgame uh, for the Academy Consideration promotion going on. Oh, that's cool. Let's scroll. I'm scrolling through. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna stop on a random scene, and I'm gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna read. Uh, care to explain? I'm looking for Doctor Strange. You're about five years too early. Stephen Strange is currently performing surgery. Twenty blocks that way. What do you want with him? Can you guess what scene that was? <laughs> um, is that the one where Tony Stark uh, pulls the shield out of the back of the car? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, and he, and he eats the Burger King. Yeah. You're right, Chris. Yeah. All right, there you go. Academy Award uh, granted. Yes, thank you. Uh, apparently in this as well, like, you know, it's not a, the movie translated to life. This is this is um, an actual script because there's more information in a lot of these than, than the, the what we saw in the movies. Um, and so, uh, Captain America is apparently 112 years old in 2023 when he gives the shield to, uh, Sam Wilson, uh, Sam Wilson. And then that his flashback at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, takes place in 1949, which is the same year Peggy Carter left the SSR to be a shield director, the director of shield. Mm. I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this has already been established in comics canon, canon, if you will. But Steve Rogers, I would think he would age a lot better and live a lot longer than a normal human because he's got super strength. Honestly, a comic book writer could probably write it either way. You know, oh, the super serum is going to make you live longer or the super serum is just going to deteriorate your body much faster because you're just like... 
you're like grind, grinding it into the ground. So um, he can live longer or older. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And, you know, and yeah, he, he takes care of himself. He takes care of himself. Yeah, he's a good looking guy. He, he watches his language. Uh, <laughs> for, for, yeah, there you go. That's the trick to Linda 115 is watching your language. E- exactly. Um, so, yeah, that, that's cool. If you want to go look at that, read through that. If you're bored, you know, scroll through that script. Uh, there you go. There's some other stuff, too. Uh, they talked about people. Um, I don't have it pulled up, but the people who were lost in the snap as well, some other names we didn't see. So uh, you can get some tidbits. You remember those uh, Offenders TV shows that they're still making, the animated ones for Hulu? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, one of those, Tigra and Dazzler, this animated series is on hold right now because the showrunner, Erica Rivenoja, has been fired after uh, uh, after some major creative differences. Ooh, fired. Usually what you hear is a showrunner just willingly leaves over creative differences, so fired makes me think that there was something yeah. maybe personal going on there between... Uh, because it's not Jeff. It's not Jeff Loeb anymore, right? Well, you know, he, He's not. He kind of is. He he was heading this up a little bit, but but I mean, if the, not only was she fired, her writing staff was fired as well, and they were fifteen Whoa. weeks into a twenty week planned writing cycle. Whoa, that seems. I don't know what's going on there, but that seems like a really shitty thing to do. Because like, I mean, I could see getting rid of the showrunner, but. To firing the whole writers' well, room. Yikes! If well, if they did something, if they were writing a, a show that was not what they said they were going to write, I could see that being the thing. Uh, oh. But they they are looking to... The show's not canceled. It's not uh, on hiatus. Like, they will be replacing what they said with a new runner and a new writing team. To, to, wow, to that's... I, I mean, I, I it seems like something maybe we'll never know, but, you know, if she was fired and she's pissed off, she might run to Twitter sooner or later and maybe let us know the truth. I'd love to know what's going on here. It makes me think that there's something more than just creative differences because the blow up the whole show it seems like something maybe personal got in there or maybe uh some insults were thrown maybe in well, both directions but man that is like that's like that's the nuclear option right well there. the only thing i know from her is she works on south park um which is if she leaned into the offenders and horrible maybe uh, you know uh crude awful humor that they you know they don't want to associate with marvel uh too far that might be it I mean, I don't know. I was under the impression that's what they were going for with this Hulu show, but yeah, but uh, I mean, there's there's a point. There's a point where you can go too far. I mean, in in their defense, um, but she also did the movie Trolls, which I thought the the sequel's coming up pretty soon. She's hmm. she wrote the movie Trolls. Man, I don't know. I, well, let's uh, let's try to keep our ear to the ground on that one. I'd love to see. I'd love to hear actually what happened. Yeah, that, that's a cr- that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I'll let you know. It'll pop up on the news cycle somewhere, maybe mm-hmm. six months down the road. Uh, but instead, where we can very focus on Marvel on Disney Plus. There's a lot of options mm-hmm. still there. Uh, if you know, in case you haven't been watching the older animated shows, um, or you know, like X Men, Spider Man. I was watching Earth Minus Heroes today, Mike, while I was working on some projects. Nice, good choice, good choice. Yeah, that show still holds up so well. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> uh, but Kevin Feige said that this is still all the shows that are going to Disney Plus are still the big screen, but they're just streaming. So the stories mm. and the characters are big screen stories and, and characters, but it's on a streaming network. I mean, th- he's just. Uh, this is just the distribution method that they've chosen for their content. Instead of the movie theater, put it on the streaming service. Let's see how that pans out because we were all under the impression that's what we were supposed to be getting with Netflix a few years ago. Like, oh, why leave your house when you can watch a movie at home? It's like, well, Netflix, all these movies suck, though. Um, it seems like they're improving, hopefully. So, um, But it seems like maybe Disney is finally well, maybe there. I don't know. I didn't watch Lady and the Tramp. I don't know about you. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it was on in my house. And I saw the end of it, and it didn't, like, grind my gears if you will but that's i'm not the audience for lady and the tramp by a long shot uh but i will tell you you know that this is a great you know that that marvel can put these smaller shows on a fast track um movie production schedule and know where they tie into the story as a whole like they have deadlines they have teams behind it to make this happen so they're filming these shows like they're filming the movies and, and putting them out in the same time so that's great he has that in mind as they, they move forward uh also miss marvel moon knight and she hulk uh, are are rumored to be filming almost done probably in production by twenty end of twenty twenty, meaning that they're looking at a twenty twenty one release already for these shows. Yeah, 
Well, I mean, we just talked about kind of this gap before we get Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It seems like that is going to be a temporary gap because if all these shows are kind of filming and wrapping up by the end of 2020, it seems like Disney is making the uh, financial shareholder stock investment strategy of doing something big every quarter because they have to make that quarterly earnings call, you know, and uh, Bob Iger, before he leaves, wants to be able to just tout about all of these new streaming numbers. So if they do everything by the quarter, it seems like, hey, you got all these shows. It seems like at least every three months on the streaming service, we're going to get something big, maybe even two big things because we're getting Star Wars shows too. Yeah. There's just other Disney stuff that's uh, friendly. So it seems like 2021 will be when kind of Disney has reached its full power, its full potential. Right. And um, on top of that, Disney uh, as a studio uh, will hit $10 billion, be the first year I think they hit $10 billion in one year and before Star Wars even releases this year. Man, I, uh, I I I caught up with the Disney Imagineering show. Yes, on uh, Disney Plus. Uh, I think I mentioned when I watched the first couple episodes a few weeks ago, and I was like, it seems kind of strange because it's a documentary about Disney made by Disney, so they're not really being that harsh on themselves. But in the later episodes, when kind of things get a little bit more tumultuous in the um, in like the 90s and late 80s, they, they, they seem to be a little bit more critical of themselves, not as far as maybe an independent producer would go. But uh, if anybody was for some reason turned off by the show when I mentioned that, I would go back into it. There's just so much cool imaginary stuff you get to learn about. Oh, I really like the show. I mean, I think it's interesting, Like, and this is me, how I watch these shows. When I watch people who pop up on the, the, the thing to talk, and I'm like, like, here's the years they worked here, and I'm like, why did all these people like have a mass exodus in like 1985 and like 1989? <laughs> like, um, have you watched the Epcot one? Of course, um, mm-hmm. that was my favorite that's episode. One. I think that's episode two. Yeah, it is, but like that's still like one of my favorite ones. I was like because mm-hmm. Epcot literally feels like something that was built and like is awesome and just forgotten about for a very very long time until this year, and they're 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 coming along with it. Uh, but also while we're thinking, speaking of Disney as a whole, parks. The Star Wars Rise of the Resistance ride launched this week at Disney oh, Florida. Oh, okay. So that means the the Disneyland one shouldn't be far behind. Yes, and apparently it broke down like its first day too. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but it's got some cool. Like I've heard re- uh, nothing but good things out of it. So um, that that's the, they say that's going to elevate those those Star Wars parks to a whole new level. So Boom. great. Uh, I'm looking forward to Marvel Park uh, myself. But uh, Fal- oh yes, please. Yeah. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, one of these shows on Disney Plus, the first one really, uh, will look into the post in game scenes with Sam Wilson with the Captain America's shield. And we have one photo here that someone was able to sneak out of this panel. And if I won't be damned if Bucky Barnes does not look like Steve Rogers from a distance in this photo. <laughs> um, I, I I mean, there's really nothing to do. They're not in costumes. They're, they're just hanging out, but... <laughs> These two guys are always in jackets. They pull off jackets very well. I think it's because jackets are like, even though it's another layer, it's very form fitting. It's just always the they always get the most flattering uh, jackets for the shoulder muscles and the biceps. Man, those guys are those guys are good looking. Yeah, and and uh, you know that that's uh, Marvel's uh, version of you know camouflage. You know, put on the jacket, <laughs> no one will recognize who you are. Yeah, put baseball cap on, you're good mm-hmm. to go. But man, does he not look like Steve, uh, like Chris Evans in that photo standing there? Like Jesus. Mm-hmm. So um, it's fun. So they're they're working on this move, this show. I don't expect to see a whole lot, you know, coming up. But um, very excited, especially watching Arch Minus Heroes with the Baron Zemo in there, and they're putting actual Baron Zemo in here with his name and costume. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, see some crossover there. This is probably one of the most interesting topics out, out of this this thing is the Wandavision panel. Mm-hmm. And I know they're filming the show. I've had someone tell me they're filming the show in the sets, and we get our first live action image of the show, and it comes in black and white. Yeah, this is a this is a cool screenshot. It looks like uh, I don't know if they created it with an older camera or if they did some post uh, processing on it, but the blacks are like really crushed on this. Like this looks like it's an older photo, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's. Leave it to Beaver or I Love Lucy in a nutshell, like right here. The mm-hmm. costumes, the hairstyle, everything about this screams, you know, of the the fifties period, right mm-hmm. here. Which which I think is really cool. I mean, even Paul Bettany, who normally I don't, he's got what normally got like blonde hair, right? Like with his dark brown comb over there. Uh, very very impressed with this photo, just just alone. Uh, but they have confirmed. Kevin Feige himself said that Wanda will in fact get the name the Scarlet Witch officially 
in this TV show. Oh, I wonder if um, uh, what's her face gives it to her. Uh, my favorite uh, person from the Thor franchise. What's her name? Bitsy, Ditsy. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, Darcy. <laughs> the, one of the one of the Darcy, one of the bro girls. Itsy, itsy Bitsy, and Darcy. The <laughs> maybe maybe, uh, maybe she'll uh, give her that moniker. But man, I just want to watch this show already, so I know what is the fate of Vision. Uh, obviously, it seems like the Scarlet Witch is moving on because she's going to be showing up in Doctor Strange's movie. But what is the fate of Vision? Is he still alive? Is he still there? His stone is gone. It's gone back in time where it belongs. The ones in his current reality are crushed to oblivion, destroyed by themselves. So I just want to know the fate of the Vision. But, Paul Bettany is too great to be left in limbo. But we are a little over a year away from figuring that out. And I'm sure we will yeah. as, as more comes along. As we see him, hopefully, yeah, he's turned sideways. Does he have a gem in his head, do you think? Oh, I didn't even think about that. I mean, that. it doesn't look yeah. like it from here, but like maybe they Yeah, they no, I don't it. think so. Cuz you can kind of see the uh you can see the ridge of his of his other eyebrow, which means the middle of his forehead is technically exposed and I don't see anything, mm. but Photoshop can do anything. Post so post production, what we can see. Uh they they like to hide things at Marvel, as we all know. Uh Fe- Feige also confirmed this uh movie as being fun, funny, and scary. And will have repercussions for all of Phase Four. Hint, hint, multiverse. Oh, all right. Uh, seems like uh, she's going to have a mental breakdown at some point in time and rip the fabric of space and time. That, or uh, you know, there could be someone from another dimension because of the the gems and the Loki show, totally messing with her, and then that oh, would maybe. cause her to like be even worse. Because we're going to talk about another show where it looks like, hey, this. Uh, heroin gets you know the happy ending she wants, but everything's probably not as it seems. So, uh, we'll, we'll yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of questions about this show, and I think I think that's great. Even though the name, Nil's not the best name, but it's growing on me. I, I mean, I'm not, I don't hate it. I'm not up late and I argue with people online about it anymore. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> anymore. Anymore. But now we're gonna start the trailer park section of the show. This is we have not had a trailer park in a long time, Mike. So you just whip out your lawn chair, you sit down, and we're gonna talk about these trailers, these All movie right. trailers, and TV shows that came out this week. <laughs> if the, if this wasn't a podcast, it was a visual media, and we'd put that uh, very iconic GIF of the dude walking up to like the soccer field, whipping out the chair, sitting it down. Is that not Jason Momoa doing that? It looks like them, but I've never researched the GIF. I don't know what it's from. I just know it very, very personally, just looking at it all the time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That that would be it right here. Um, the first and foremost, we have the Black Widow trailer, um, teaser trailer, if you will, um, released mm-hmm. almost a year after Endgame uh, teaser was released. And let me tell you, what's the first thing we said after we watched this together today, Mike? Man, the music. The music is so awesome. It's like got that, you know that high pitched squealing sound of like a spy thriller movie going on there and mm-hmm. everything. I, I, I think you mentioned it cause we were talking about, um, the music from the Watchmen off the show. And we've mentioned it before on the show. Uh, we are we're trying to figure out what kind of this sound is. that's slowly starting to grow up. I think you said like, it's like kind it, of like industrial rock uh, industri- mixed with well, like synth or mixed with like orchestral scores. Yeah, so it's like, I call it industrial orchestral, uh, kind of thing because we, we've got this a lot, you know, in the past 10 years, um, Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails making a lot of movie soundtracks, right? And mm-hmm. you've got that digital kind of um, industrial synth sounds, uh, but also it's not quite rock because there's like no heavy drums and guitar, but it's still got that orchestral score. Like you're like, this is setting up a tone and a scene for a film. Yeah. And it seems like we're seeing a trend here. So just kind of like when Hans Zimmer had the bomb sound that really took over trailers for a long time, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we see this in a lot more trailers moving forward because it seemed like between Hans Zimmer and between now, it was just just find a classic rock song and put it in your trailer. And then if you want it to be a little different, maybe do a little bit of a tweak to it, which I think we're going to talk about here in the you next trailer. edit it, uh, the gunshots <laughs> to the beats of the song. That's, that's the trend yeah, we missed. There you go. So it's kind of fun seeing these trends but speaking of like black widow in general i was i forgot this trailer came out actually because i was so laser focused on getting this wonder woman stuff ready to go i was like oh wow i forgot black widow because this was early in the week wasn't it it was it monday or tuesday I think tuesday yeah it was because i mean i, yeah. I woke up and it was there like <laughs> yeah for me i saw i saw in the group chat you shared the the section where we get to see a dh general ross. ross or colonel ross whatever he is and it was just that gif with no context and i was kind of up 
in West Coast time, and I was like, what am I looking at here? What are you talking about? So I was like, what is this from? This is probably from a trailer. Then I had to go hunt down. I was like, oh, Black Widow trailer came out today. I was, that's pretty surprising. Yeah, because well, I only shared that because that of, of all this, that CGI in his de-aged face looks awful so far. I know we're well, <laughs> well, well out from release, but I was like, oh, man, that this really sticks out like a sore thumb. But they opened the trailer with shots from uh, Age of Ultron, uh, yeah, I think Infinity War as well, um, and maybe in-game, some dialogue from in-game, uh, before getting into this. And I think the other person she's talking to is actually General Ross. So we're going to get uh, some information of where she's been between the movie Civil War and Infinity War, where this movie takes uh-huh. place. But also, it looks like we might see where she's brought into S.H.I.E.L.D. for the first time as well. Yeah, it seems like uh, it, we could be kind of telling two different stories. Uh, it seems like we want to wrap up the Black Widow storyline, but then also maybe transition in her sister. I don't know who the actress is, but I saw some Florence, people on uh, Reddit. Pew, I think is her name. Yeah, some, yeah, some people were saying like on Reddit and online that she's having a pretty good year. So I guess if you were to look her up on IMDb, she has been getting work other places. I'm not 100% sure. Um but uh, good for her. I don't know if she's going to end up being the new Black Widow or not, but they had that little fight scene in that kitchen that just uh-huh. reminded me of, I think it's an episode of Futurama where they go to another dimension and the two benders are just fighting each other and they're just punching each other's fists because they're just mirroring the moments. So I can only think of that. But um, it's fun. The whole vibe of this trailer makes me feel like some people were saying that it felt like a Bourne movie. To me, it kind of felt like a Mission Impossible movie. And uh, none of those descriptions are bad. I am down for any of those types of films. Well, it looks like a, it mixes some of the sci-fi elements of some older Bond movies with with the the cool action scenes of, of- you know some of those other ones you mentioned as well mm-hmm. but like so i saw someone they took the clip where they're her and um uh, helena and uh or yelena and um natasha are swapping guns back and forth and they just loop that so like oh the whole movie's just them swapping guns back and forth <laughs> the whole time I do I do have to say, so if this trailer came out on Tuesday, you had until the end of the day Tuesday to make the joke of, oh, that's where Hopper went after the end of Stranger Things. Uh-huh. And like that joke got tired very, very quickly. So uh, just to let you know that but, that that that's that, that, that boat has already set sail. The observation is over. He went from playing a red demon to a red guardian, Mike. Uh and, and you know, he, he, he does he's got the dad bod, you know. Uh he he's got the, the <laughs> Except thing. for except for the one shot where he has a shirt off and he's flexing from about the chest up. Yeah. And look, he's but he is buff from the waist up. So I don't know if he's just been getting in the shape after that season of Stranger Things. But uh, we all we love David ha- Harbor here on the podcast. No. We love him so much. We went to go see that awful Hellboy movie that came out earlier this year, and I still like David Harbor. His personality was the only good thing about that movie. Everything else was awful. What, so, and um, now he's I'm got a very fake happy. Russian accent. Who he plays again? Not only did he have a friend who drank a Slurpee called Alexi in Stranger Things, he now plays a character named Alexi who is from Russia. In this movie. <laughs> I, I'm in a great position here personally because not only am I very bad at doing other accents myself, but it's really hard for me to to uh, to pick out really bad accents so i think somebody i think i saw some people saying that there were some bad accents in this trailer but i was like i can't tell it all goes over my head anyway so i'm I'm just having a great time this all looks all looks really fun i want to see david harver beat some people up in that costume we got to see the the white black widow colorway which is really cool that'll sell some additional toys and i'm sure it'll be a skin in a in some ios mobile games out there Uh, that you can pay a dollar 99 for oh definitely uh what was it um Someone's like, there's a. I saw this gif. It's a dark mode and a light mode of her. It goes from <laughs> yeah. the white suit to the, to the black suit. Um, from, it seems like from the story, uh, she wants to eliminate the Black Widow program. Maybe she has recognized that this is a very, this is a threat. You know, she wants to shut it down. It's destroying too many lives. It's the whole reason why she couldn't have a relationship with Bruce Banner. Uh, so maybe she's going to recruit her sister and. Is David Harbour the dad? Well, it, it's, or... it's a, so they, they explain this at the, at the panel. It's a like a fictitious family. Like David Harbour oh, yeah. and Rachel Weisz were fake married to to portray a family for the like in real life, like as a cover. Okay. So 
it's kind of like a chosen forced family, yeah. if you will. So it seems like they're going to all get together. They're going to like raid maybe the Black Widow facility mm-hmm. because there's a there's a quick shot. I don't know if it's a flashback of it seems it like a new. few Black Widows in a room. Yeah, it does look new. It seems like they have like mm-hmm. at new least attack. I think there's a cl- I think there's a close up shot of a gun that looks new. So maybe they're going to go in there, fight a bunch of them. Kind of curious where Taskmaster fits in. Maybe obviously he's there to stop. That's them. the question. Is it a guy? Or is it a lady? Ooh, I, I saw some people uh, who were who had the um, clever idea of like, oh, what if it's Hawkeye? And this was how they met each other. And then everyone's like, no, you idiot. This takes place after Civil War. It's not Hawkeye. Yeah. So I, I don't think we're going to be seeing Jeremy Renner anywhere in this film. Oh, but, I think, yeah, I think make, we'll get Budapest. Oh, you think so? I do. I do think I think they even maybe mentioned we might see some, some resolution of what that really means. All right. Well, okay. I'll give you this. If Jerry, if Jeremy Renner is in the movie, it'll probably in the past. They'll have to put some motion tracking dots on his face, take out some wrinkles. But it doesn't seem like maybe he's going to affect. Yeah, no, I think I think they'll just plot. show the Budapest scene as as a, as yeah. a reference. I, I mean, I think again, Task, Taskmaster in this didn't really sell me on on the suit yet. I want to see the hood up. I want to see some fight scenes. Uh, we did see the shield once in this trailer when Taskmaster was fighting Red Guardian, who is holding his own against Taskmaster. So I don't think it's a, a, a female character, to be honest. Um, but I, you know, I could be wrong. So I think this is an interesting, you know. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're I mean, we're talking about kind of like there's gonna be superhero soldier serum brought up in some way. So Taskmaster, I know it, his comic book abilities is like mirroring, but you know this could also be an experimental type person. So uh, it seems like gender could honestly go either way. But usually, what I've noticed over the years when it comes to TV or movies, when you have a character that has a mask on for the majority of the film. It's either going to be a stunt, like celebrity casting, like when the mask finally comes off, you're just like, oh, they cast this really well-known person to play that role. Oh, that's really, really cool. Or it's going to be somebody like Scooby-Doo style that's introduced at the very beginning of the movie. Oh, you were Taskmaster the whole time. So if that's not the case, it's not going to be like Mandalorian style. It's not like he's going to have the helmet on the whole time. So uh, it seems like the mystery will be revealed at some point in time. It'll be a twist at some point. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that right now. So uh, we'll, we'll keep our eyes on. But I mean, I think this was a good trip. I think it was a good teaser. While it's not, you know, the most revealing, you know, not the most, you know, uh, I, there's not super, you don't have an Iron Man suit or Thor action scenes kind of going around or, you know, a rock song too. I still still think it's a pretty good teaser. For, for a Black Widow movie, our first one yeah. for this year. So no, no complaints. None at all. Speaking of no complaints, the other female-led movie, we have female-led superhero movies dropping all over next year. Wonder Woman eighty four, just fresh, hot off that publish button, right here on this trailer. First footage and trailer from from Brazil Comic Con, and um, is she swinging from lightning? Yes, I'm so glad that's the first thing you said. That's like that is this that is the whole trailer in a nutshell. How awesome it is is she swings off of two bolts of lightning with her lasso. And if you would have told me we would see that in the trailer, I'd be like, that's gonna look so stupid. It doesn't. It looks so badass. The first time I watched the trailer, I didn't know what she was doing. I thought she was just kind of moving through the sky and that was just the backdrop. So when I went back through, kind of going frame by frame watching it again, I was like, holy crap, she is literally repelling and swinging off these bolts of lightning i mean that was that is so sick man this whole trailer i mean uh i put together kind of the the featured image the thumbnail for for the podcast every week so i knew when this trailer would drop i'd be going through with my frame by frame add-on and google chrome to kind of look at the shots and there was at least a dozen frames that could have been the the image for this episode like there's just so much to look at in this trailer man yeah i mean I, i so we've got the the um the armor suit, the eagle armor suit, or whatever it looks like at the end there. It looks like she mm-hmm. hits it back, and the wings just shatter behind her at one yeah. point. Yeah, uh, we've got the Mandalorian himself, uh, walking, Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal walking this, and I'm like, I'm watching. I'm like, that's the Mandalorian's voice. Why is this, why, why, why am I thinking Mandalorian's voice? But, but he's playing. <laughs> he's playing the character Maxwell Lord. Uh, I know we kind of talked a little bit before the show about. Uh, you wanted to talk about Vandal Savage a little bit? Yeah, I feel like he's got to fit in here somewhere, just because we're seeing um, we're seeing Chris Pine come back, 
And it's just like, is, is is it magic that brings him back from the dead? I feel like at some point in time we gotta bring the Lazarus Pit in in these in the DC movies. We've had we've had decades and decades and decades of DC movies. Yes, they've started with uh, Batman and Superman mainly, but like, where's our Lazarus Pit? I feel like this is a big magical component of the DC universe that we gotta bring in at some point in time. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see that in in this. I, I watched the trailer with my wife, and uh, she noticed that. Chris Pine has some kind of graying hairs on his Mm. side a little bit. So it doesn't look like necessarily he was brought back from the dead on the day he perished. It seems like he's aged a little bit. So I'm kind of like, well, what, what's happening there? How long has he been awake for? The trailer leads with the dialogue, you know, the the Pedro Pascal's are like, I can make your dreams come true. You know, just envision it. I can make him. And then he had some sort of rock. It looked like at at some point. So Mm -hmm. is he using, some sort of uh, faux um, god, you know, is it is it like Zeus? Is it some other god's powers to bring these maybe, people back and give wishes? But then he gets whatever he wants in return. Maybe it's a gift from Vandal Savage. You know, he's he's basically ageless and timeless, so maybe he's I, come across stuff in the I past. I feel they beat Vandal Savage to the goddamn ground and everything that he's been in lately. Like, he was the big bad for, like, what, two shows and... In, on the CW, so so I mean I don't think it's I think it's gonna be purely this is related to the Amazonians and and like their gods and and stuff like that because she's swinging off lightning. That's Zeus. That's gotta be <laughs> Zeus, right? Like something uh, like that. It's so badass. Um, and then she's got more whip tricks up her sleeve when she uses it in that hallway to push people backwards while she's spinning it around was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, is she run, she runs down the street and looks like she swings through the sky as well on that one, doesn't she? At one point, yeah, she's she's taking Spider Man's move from the PlayStation yeah. Four game of that charge jump. This this, <laughs> this whip is going to be the star of this movie. No, uh, no, I'm Ooh, can uh, now now that you're talking about it, like I'm I'm imagining like a Spider Man Four esque like Wonder Woman game where she's just like running around like maybe European cities like traversing yeah. the landscape with her with her whip. But of course, Wonder Woman she flies. But she she doesn't fly in these movies, so I'm not expecting her to get the gift of flight. But you know, you know, there could be some stuff going on there. Maybe there's a power meter in the game. She can only fly for a little bit. She's like a she's like a halfway between yeah. movies and comic book Wonder Woman. Yeah, she loses some of her power, so that's why she can't fly. And you got to spend the whole hey. game getting some powers back. Hey, that's smart. And then before the next game comes out, she has to lose them all again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you know how this goes. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, this is, there's a lot of, you know, we don't, we didn't get to see Cheetah yet. We did see Kristen Wiig as, as, as mm-hmm. the character, but we didn't see her dressed up as Cheetah or whatever she's going to be doing. As I character. think there was, I believe there was some leaked concept art or maybe it was like, uh, there's a character movie poster theater mug or something. Yeah. So you can kind of maybe see what she'll look like, but we definitely have not seen her in action. Yeah. Uh, so, but she's in there. Um, there's something to do with watches. I, I guess there's a, like an old World War One watch, and then there's like a 1980s, you know, digital watch at some point. I don't know what the watch is. Is that something to do with time? Is this is this some well, sort of? Was did um I can't. What's the name of Chris Pine's character? I can't remember. Is it Steve? Ro- uh, yeah, not Steve Rogers. Steve um Trevor. Uh, Street Trevor. Did did he give? Uh, Diana a watch before he took off in that plane at the... I, I don't quite remember yeah. exactly, but yeah, there's there's watches, time's involved, we're in the 1980s, there's so we kind of get... <laughs> yeah, we get we get an 80s song throughout the thing. Yeah. Seems like Pedro Pascal maybe is the owner of the mall or something. He's some sort of mogul. We got lots of things going on here, and it all looks so cool. Um, there's a new character poster for Diana as well, where she's in the gold... Uh, suit again it looks similar to the other released image that we got a few months ago yeah. but just kind of more awesome kind of technicolors right there so i don't i don't know the origin of this gold armor that much but i know a lot of people have dug into it ever since that first photo was released so if you want to look up an explainer i'm sure a thousand people on youtube have made them yeah, already and, so and i'm looking forward to see what happens where does she get it and why does she need it that's the two questions i have for the movie so yeah there was a uh, we got to see some training scenes of some Amazonians. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's the past because we do see a glimpse of her as a child again in that montage of her running down the street. But then also at a different point in the trailer, we kind of see some Amazonians running across like kind of these poles. tall, these tall poles and like a training facility. So maybe Just she like makes a video it back game there. 
Yeah, exactly, Chris. We are pitching the game right here. Uh, somebody uh, mail a letter to Insomniac Studios. Tell them to, to pick up this IP. It's got to be cheaper than Spider-Man. I'm not saying by a huge margin, but I mean, like, there's not a lot of Wonder Woman games out there. I'm pretty sure you could get they, that they IP. They could put their B team on this game and probably still make a pretty good game. So Yeah. But yeah, I mean, th- there's a lot to you know to to digest out of this. We've not seen any you know there's no breakdown videos or anything yet because it literally just came out. So yes, uh, but we have the trailer for you to watch in the notes. She swings off lightning, people. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that just automatically makes it cooler than the Black Widow trailer. And I have no complaints about the Black Widow trailer. And these two properties don't necessarily have to be pitted against each other. But when they come out within a week of each other, of course we're going to compare them. But, man, she swings off lightning. That's so fucking yeah. cool. Yeah, two, uh, again, female-led superhero movies. What a, what a summer to be alive. That's awesome. That's yes. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of uh, other trailers that came out this week, The Boys Season 2 um, trailer leaked online and Amazon was not happy about it, so they just put it up anyway. Um, <laughs> this is a great, this is a great trailer too. Uh, there's like no story in it at all. It's just like let's just show a bunch of blood and action. Yeah, I think it just got done like what two weeks ago filming. So like it's just like here's some cool stuff. Here's blood. Here's people dying. Here's you know Homelander being creepy and weird as hell as again. Um, and then what's his name there drinking tea and at, at the end, <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot going on, but nothing story, but I think, you know, just a reminder, Hey, the boys is coming back. Yeah. I want to see it. Yeah. This is my preferred type of trailer for TV shows because usually I don't dig into TV show trailers too much because, you know, I want to be able to pick up on the story on my own. You know, with a movie, it's a little different because it's just a one shot type of deal. So if I have to get a TV trailer, this is how I want it. Just let me, just remind me what it was like to watch The Boys. That's all I need to get me hyped again. So, uh, yeah, don't have to worry about spoilers with this one. Uh, go check it out. Yeah, very cool. Very, very exciting. I want to see a Umbrella Academy version of this. Like, give us the highlights of what you filmed for the Umbrella Academy season two, so you know I can I can get that hype levels. Keep them keep them mm-hmm. keep them up there and going. Yes, agreed. Yes, uh, another trailer that dropped this week is James Bond: No Time to Die, the twenty fifth James Bond movie, uh, the last Daniel Craig one. Finally, he's been in what five, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think it looks. I, I I was saying it looks cool. Uh, to, to listen to the show, Brian, uh, our, my friend, he uh, he's a big Bond fanatic, huge Bond fan. Uh, but it looks like a lot of the footage was reused from other James Bond movies in the past five years. Uh, it didn't seem to strike me as new or, you know, thing, but it still feels like a good James Bond movie. I don't, I don't know. What are you thinking? I mean, uh, I think we've said it before on this show. We're not the biggest Bond heads. Probably the closest I ever got to really – digging my feet into Bond was when I was a kid and Pierce Brosnan was my Bond and that's when those movies were closer to kind of like a video game or just like fun gadgets. Uh, Daniel Craig's Bond's a little bit more grounded, nothing wrong with that, but I've never really connected to the story. So I I, I saw that um, Christopher Waltz pops back up in this and I I didn't see the last Bond movie so I guess I know he didn't die in the last Bond movie he's still kicking around and the and the 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 Daniel Craig Bonds have all of these weird type of prisons that they put their bad guys in they're either like big fish globes that they put them in or just weird like robotic chairs that they pop out of the ground so I don't know what's going on there but that's pretty funny I like the idea of like a competing 007 Uh, I don't I don't remember the actress that that's playing this other spy but she seems really turned up to 11 really badass and she's making fun of bond for being an old yeah, dude that so. is a look La- <laughs> lashana lynch she played um she was in captain marvel she played uh oh the little girl's mom her best friend oh uh, okay yeah uh, so yeah, don't have a whole lot to draw from this, but I, I'm a big fan of Remy Malik, so I, I'm curious to see what his ultimate goal is. What was he kind of talked a bit in the trailer about living forever or something like that, or not dying? Playing, playing God, is, you don't get remembered if history doesn't remember people who play God very well or something like that. Yeah, so I'm curious if he, if he if he's trying to live on forever, maybe he has a disease he's trying to cure. I don't really yeah, know. Yeah, what's the purple stuff? What's the deal with the mask? Uh Remy Malik, he's a great actor. You know, I, I feel like he's going to nail this villain role. Uh kind of gives me vibes out of um oh, uh, what was the uh Skyfall villain? Uh Yeah, it does feel a little Skyfall-esque. Yeah. Um, um so I I'm I'm excited for it. I mean, I, I I wish we could talk a little more eloquently about Bond, but you know, 25 movies in, that's pretty good. Uh, Marvel's catching up to it though. 
even though it's you not know, the same character over and over again. <laughs> yeah, that, the thing is, like, if this is the last Daniel Craig Bond, you know, why attach myself now? I'll just wait for the next Bond to be cast, and then mm-hmm. I'll jump on board then. So, Well, it's a fun fact uh, about me. I didn't watch any James Bond movie until Casino Royale with uh, Daniel, Whoa. Daniel Craig. Whoa, wow, that, I guess, well, I mean, really, if you, if you didn't catch on to the Pierce Brosnan when you were a kid, the only other Bond options that you had to a child would have been boring because they're just old movies yeah. that your dad watched. Yeah. You know? and, and, uh, yeah, I, I, that's the thing. I think, I don't think, I don't think my dad watched them and that's why I didn't watch them. Um, but you know, I'm sure you played golden. I played gold. I, I played gold. I could tell you everything you want to know about gold. but I did not watch that movie at all. Uh, there you go. But, uh, but yeah, so but then I went back and watched some of the older ones uh, with, with, yeah, <laughs> You went and watched all of these new James Bond movies, and you're like, where's all the proximity mines? Yeah. Come on, that's all I know about James Bond is proximity mines all over the place. Well, it's funny because I live within like 20 minutes of uh, Fort Knox, which is like one of the highlight points in one of the James Bond movies. I think, <laughs> I think it was like Octopussy maybe. Um, uh, I don't re- I don't remember. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's, it's literally I've, – I've driven by – every time I drive by, I send a photo to my friend Brian who's a – like I said, a James Bond head. I'm like, hey, look where I'm at today. Um, but uh, yeah, I just – I. I it's a huge franchise, and this is the last movie with him. And uh, it looks like it's got some great casting, so maybe we can maybe we can dig into this later this, when it comes out. The other trailer that came out today is this one for this crazy movie called Free Guy, mm-hmm. and it's essentially Ryan Reynolds if uh, playing a character, an NPC in a Grand Theft Auto style game, and then he goes rogue. And I tell you what, Ryan Reynolds is having a week. Even before we, uh, even before we talk about this trailer, uh, are you ca- ca- caught up on all of the Peloton oh, ad stuff? Oh, am I ever! And then his uh, liquor, uh, his oh, gin my- company. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. It was it was fun because my wife uh, wasn't keeping up with all of it, so I kind of got to distill all of it uh, to her last night. Of and if you don't know out there, uh, Peloton is basically an exercise bike, a very expensive one with a TV in front of it, and it costs a lot of money. And there's even like a monthly fee associated with it, so it's a big expensive workout thing. But it's kind of considered tacky to give a loved one a uh, piece of exercise equipment for the holidays. So a lot of people uh, jumped on Peloton when they released a holiday ad of this woman who was kind of. Bizarre bizarrely afraid to get on the bike in the commercial and then she was recording herself on it and making a vlog and then she was showing it to her significant other from the couch and she still kind of looked scared so it kind of seemed like a really weird hostage situation and uh ryan reynolds very quickly and nimbly hired the actress from the peloton commercials and i think just yesterday or maybe like a day and a half ago released a um, aviation jid ad where she's in it front and center they don't mention the exercise bike in any way but she's visually distressed she's got her friends flanking her on her left and right and they're at the bar drinking gin and they're just like you're okay it'll be okay do you need another drink you're great you're beautiful just like really building her up it's just really funny i'm sure somebody out there have has done like a fan edit where they've either intercut these commercials together or put them back to back but a, a, a um, it, fan edit for commercials is <laughs> a hell of a phrase to use yeah but but just all of that, and then before even this trailer can, comes out, the teaser trailer that came out about a day before yeah. uh, was uh, Ryan Reynolds in uh, in a set with his other with his other cast members that were kind of talking about the movie, and then Ryan Reynolds dovetails the whole trailer into an infomercial about the shirt that he's wearing. It's obviously scripted; it, no one's on set is um, is uh, caught off guard, but it's still really funny that he's like <laughs> somebody calls and he's just like, "I actually already own that shirt," and he's just like. No way! It's just really funny. So uh, Ryan Reynolds has like really hit a stride. And here. then to top it all off, this is a this was a Fox produced movie before the merger, um, mm-hmm. and, and purchase, and they still do. In the first five seconds, ten seconds is, is making fun of Disney. It's like from the oh, studio that great. brought you Aladdin, The Lion King, and what I forget what the other one was. Uh, and they're like uh, twice beauty beauty, beauty and the beast, beast like yeah. twice yeah it comes comes a thing so oh, yeah and uh, uh just one more thing before we jump into the trailer uh i've i told people this last year but if you want more ryan reynolds in your life go watch just friends it's technically a, a Christmas movie um, with Ryan Reynolds and uh, some other really funny people in it. It's streaming somewhere. I don't remember exactly where. It's either on Netflix or it might even be on Disney+. Plus. I don't even remember. But go watch Just Friends if you want to get some more Ryan Reynolds in your life this Christmas. But uh, So this trailer, I forgot that this movie was about an NPC in a video game. For some reason, I thought this was Pixels all over again. 
where Ryan Reynolds was going to have to defend the planet from an alien invasion video game style. And uh, when I got into the trailer, I was pleasantly surprised that I forgot what the plot was because this is something different, yeah. something new. Yeah, it's essentially... Um, and it's not gamer either, where it's someone's playing Ryan Reynolds and he's just being the person in the movie. He's like, he's an NPC who does this every. It's is it Lego Movie? Is this like Lego yeah, Movie, but of Grand Theft Auto? That's what I thought. This was kind of like meta Lego movie uh, kind of talk. This is a this is channeling into these NPCs are real personified people going through their lives. So I don't think – hopefully we're not going to get a weird moment where the screen backs out and we see somebody holding a controller because that kind of might break the mojo of the movie. But was, you watched – you heard, you got to hear me watch this trailer. I know you were yeah. doing other things, but if you were listening to me, I laughed quite a few times. He did laugh trailer. quite a few times. And not only is Ryan Reynolds in it. They have um, Taika Waititi in it as some looks like some corporate big head, maybe the maker of the video game. I don't know. Uh, and then um, Joe is it Joe Creary from Stranger Things? The I just call he's just a Stranger Things kid. Yeah. That's right. Uh, he's just Stranger uh, Things. He's one Joe. of the scoop, Yeah, he's a scoops ahoy. Yeah, he's got the nice hair. Uh, Steve, Steve with the hair. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, they're in this. It looks looks like a great time. I mean, uh, will will it be will it fall flat on its face like a comedy because it's a video game movie? I don't know, but it, it looks entertaining at least enough and has a lot of action scenes that make that that are funny. And I'm expecting. I don't know. Is this R rated or not? Because I could see this totally going R rated very quickly. Yeah, I I don't know. Uh, it uh, PG thirteen maybe seems like the way to get the most money out of it, but yeah, you know, Ryan Reynolds has proved everyone wrong with uh, rated R not making money. Uh, but yeah, this looks great. Um, this seems like one of the scenarios where you could go over the top with the CG and the computer effects because it's a video game. There's the moment where once he figures out he's kind of in a game and puts these glasses on, the, the camera kind of backs up into the third person view and you kind of really get the feel what it's like with a video game. Um, the, the UI through the glasses kind of took me out of the jokes a little bit because it was a little just too heavy handed and forward. So I hope he doesn't have these glasses on the entire movie. Maybe it, he like, I would be okay if he just loses them it didn't look, after using them. It didn't look like he did later when, when he was, met the girl up. Um, yeah. I, who was, who was the actress that was playing the girl that he's teamed up jo- with? Because I was Jody Comer is her name. I, mm, I don't, she looked familiar. I, I don't know what she's from. I don't know either. Um, but, um, but apparently she is uh, technically one of the programmers in the game, if you will. Mm. If you read the, so I don't know. the synopsis in the, in the trailer. But I will I will tell you, I mean, this is coming out July 3rd of next year. Like, that's a huge, huge risk for a movie to come out. You know, that's a lot of faith in a movie, I guess, to come out July, I mean, July 3rd. I mean, if, if Fox is now owned wholeheartedly by Disney, that means Bob Iger has seen this movie. He has judged that is ordained and safe to go out in July. So... Even though Disney can be considered maybe an evil overlord in some scenarios, they seem to have decent judgment most of the time with their films. So well, if they say that this comes out in July, it seems like they uh, they have uh, deemed it worthy. Yeah, and also Greg Berlanti is one of the producers, in case you didn't know. Oh, oh that's fun. Yeah, so uh, it's just like a fun movie. Yeah, and check out the trailer, and especially if you like video games, it's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tickle your fancy, especially when he gets his health kit. Uh, and you know what this the only reason this makes me a little nervous is like i feel like ryan reynolds is on a high of his life right now he is just making amazing hilarious movies and they're pretty much all created out of his vision i mean that's why the director left for deadpool 2 because this was very much a ryan reynolds uh feature he's kind of becoming this uh comedian auteur if you will the way he likes to approach humor i'm just terrified someone's gonna come out of the woodwork and say he did some real evil shit and now he's got to get canceled so ryan i i hope you are as awesome as we all think you are so i'll cross my fingers that there is some faith in humanity and he's not just evil underneath all of this so uh, no. as of right now i still i still love the rentals i think he's good i think i think he's good i mean i think his high was when he was on two guys a girl in a pizza place but you know who am i to pick <laughs> when, whenever some actors who are top. you to judge um but yeah check that that's our notes but that wraps up Trailer Park uh, until at least next week because in some really, really weird scenario here, Fortnite is getting an exclusive clip for Star Wars <laughs> in the video game at this theater projector in the game next Saturday. Oh, oh, so like literally on the stage or on the map. 
you run up to a theater? Yeah, there's a theater. It's this drive-in theater. That's uh, it's been in I think every map. Uh, and then you just walk up to it and it'll show it on the screen while you're in the game. <laughs> so how many times do you have to play a match um before you catch the whole thing? Because all I know is the one time I played Fortnite, if I stayed still too long, somebody they, killed me. So <laughs> for these events, they turn off um killing, so you can just watch it with a bunch of people. Uh, oh, okay. Because <laughs> of of that exact reason why people don't have nice things because <laughs> i feel like that's what everyone would do it just they would just camp with a sniper rifle and be like oh you want to see this clip i don't think so well they I mean, a lot of their events they turn i mean i've not gotten killed during any event so i think i think it's a good time but i mean that's i think that's an interesting thing uh again we're less than two weeks away from rise of the skywalker and uh, just stay away from spoilers folks stay away Sneak, all you can sneaking up on us that's right speaking of sneaks the mandalorian Chapter 7 has moved up two days to a Wednesday, December 18th, oh. to include a special look at the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> wow. I mean, I don't know why Disney feel like they need to uh, push the marketing for the, everyone seeing this movie already. Well, I'm sure they've already had the, the projections on they, the tickets they're probably, all lined up. They're probably, no, one, like, no one's going to watch this episode all weekend because they're going to be at the movies. Oh, uh, actually, yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah, it's uh, Friday. <laughs> People are going to be out seeing uh, Star Wars, so... Yeah, so um, everyone's like, there's a tie-in for Mandalorian and Star Wars. And I'm like, no, read the article. And I'm like, oh, it's going to include you know a special what? look. You know, what? Re- real quick, uh, spoiler-free, what did what did you think of the last episode of Mando? Honestly, not my favorite. If I Yeah, if, I, feel, I, I feel like it's kind of spinning its wheels a little bit. Well, I don't think it's that. I think this, uh, again, uh, the you know, non-spoilers, uh, fan service, the episode, uh, was all this was. Yeah, that's what it kind of felt. It, I was kind of expecting for a show that was only going to be eight episodes, and some of the episodes only clock in at about 30 minutes. I thought this was going to be a very dense show where we really move the story along. But kind of even though the show, the, the set production is amazing, the special effects are awesome, all of, all of the acting for the most part is really, really great. Uh, there's some subtlety going on. We get all of this awesome premium Star Wars stuff. But sometimes I feel like after the end of the episode, especially the last one, I was like, Okay, did anything happen? Uh, did we progress the characters at all uh, beyond like maybe a little bit of a sneak clip of maybe a character that might be coming? So I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping well, Mando really brings home the finale. I, well, with, uh, in a couple weeks. with three left, right? It's, it's eight episodes. I mean, I think we're going to see this ramp up quite a bit. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe this week was just the microcosm of a filler episode. Even a streaming show with eight episodes got to have again, at least one. Yeah, right, it's fan service the episode is what I'm calling. It. But I did enjoy the uh, uh, the spoiler free the um, the one of the characters he interacts with is Amy Sedaris, who plays the receptionist and elf. Tied <laughs> into Christmas. She's great. Oh, Christmas Graham. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So I, I yeah, Mandalorian um, chapter seven will be moved up to the 18th. So if you're always waiting for Friday that week. You need to catch it on Wednesday after make sure you watch this week's episode. You get an awesome look at baby Yoda's teeth. He creates, a, he's got a really great giggle and smile in this episode. And you see his little twofers and it's great. I love it. Mike <laughs> is so enthralled with this. He thought a baby at the store earlier was baby Yoda. Yes. I heard a baby in the other aisle that was kind of not crying, but not laughing. It was just kind of making a, baby noise and i was like that's that sounds like baby yoda over there so he's got my whole heart chris yeah. my firstborn on your mind all the time mm-hmm. uh we can't forget this bit of news because uh super fan jim told us we had to talk about it no i'm kidding uh, lock and key the uh upcoming uh, adaptation of the comic book series is coming to netflix with a real date this time february 7th 2020 uh, hey, looks like we we might get back to be back to back comic book weeks on Netflix, if the fourteenth is where we might see um, uh, Umbrella Academy. Yeah, so um, and, and you know that's because they they do drop all their stuff at once. And if you're not familiar, again, Lock and Key is a uh, it's a show or it was a comic book where um, these three siblings lock L O K L O C K E uh, and their mother move into this home of their family called Key House. Which they discover is full of magical keys that may be connected to their to their father's death. So they explore the different keys and all the powers of the keys. So and the the I don't remember the uh, the chosen name for the writer of the comic book series, but it's Stephen King's son, right? If I remember right. Uh, probably. I have not. Yeah, I have so, them all ready to read, but I did not do it. Yeah, I, I believe it's Stephen King's son that 
chose a different name so he could kind of forge his Joe own Joe path. Hill. That's who it is. Y- yeah. So uh, that's kind of I would say that's kind of the reason why maybe this title has swelled maybe above other indie series. I've never read it. I'm sure it could be absolutely phenomenal, but usually that kind of like uh, author cachet kind of factors into these streaming deals sometimes. So uh, I'll, I'll be looking forward to checking it out because I beyond what you just said, Chris, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny um, because if you you look him up, um, he he looks just like his dad. Like, he, <laughs> like there's no hiding who this guy is. Literally Stephen King's son. Um, but I believe also if I if I remember correctly, Lock and Key has wrapped up completely. Uh, so it is it is done, donezos. So you can actually get the whole thing all in one package and not have to worry about chasing it down. You know, weekly. Oh, the 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 comic book. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I just Google him. He does look just like his dad. Yeah, uh, he's got a beard though. He's rocking a big, thick beard. Though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's how you hide yourself in, in in today's world, the beard. And lastly, we're looking forward to next week because uh, it was either this or what was the other topic we didn't talk about, Mike? <laughs> we had to make a decision. We are either going to be talking what the fans want us to talk about, or we're going to have to talk about the Snyder Cut. And I'm so tired of talking about the Snyder Cut, even though. We may have a theoretical photo of the Snyder Cut in its physical form. Who knows if it'll ever come to fruition. Uh, but Zack Snyder, sorry, we're not talking about you this week. We're talking about Ghostbusters. That's right, Ghostbusters. Fan and listener on the show, Adam Nemec, he's listening right now. He's getting He demanded it. He, he said, <laughs> if you don't talk about Ghostbusters, I'm unsubscribing. Yeah, and then he subscribed right back again the next week because he's like, I need my show. Hopefully, <laughs> Adam. Uh, but uh, he, he's, he's I'm pointing in the air because Ghostbusters – Afterlife, the upcoming uh, threequel to the Ghostbusters series, is getting a trailer on Monday, I believe, uh, tomorrow, and we don't have enough time. We can't talk about it today, but I'm very excited to talk about Ghostbusters next week. And if anyone has any thoughts or uh, when they see Ghostbusters, because I've seen one screenshot of Paul Rudd holding the the uh, catching contraption from Ghostbusters. I'm gonna get slapped for being not knowing what that's called. <laughs> um, but Paul Rudd, you know, he's at the height of his career as well right now. Uh, his, the, yeah. the Renaissance, um, and the Renaissance. I mean, uh, we'll we'll find out more about the story and everything when everyone sees the trailer tomorrow. But I think they kind of released a synopsis about how uh, what is it? Finn Wolfhard, the kid from Stranger Things, yeah. the main kid from Stranger Things. He's in this, and I think he has a sister. Or moved to the yeah. middle of the country. There's a barn, and there's. Ghostbusting stuff there. They have some sort of lineage to the Ghostbusters. I don't know if it's I, been explained what the lineage e- is yet. I think yet. they're Egon's grandkids. Uh, maybe, yeah, because Harold Ramis isn't around anymore, so maybe and that's that, how they'll kind of bring him back into it. And the, the, the Wolfhard kid looks like a, an Egon. Yeah, 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 I guess he does look like an Egon a little bit. Uh, I think I've said this a million times on the show. I'm not much of a ghost bu- Ghostbusters person. I grew up with it in my life, but it was never really my kind of a franchise that I latched on to. Uh, not even the not even the animated show. I don't know if it just never got broadcasted on whatever network I had when I was a kid, but I'm not even super familiar with the animated show. I know the comic books look really cool because I talked about that comic book You ever book play cover. the video game? Uh, no, but I've heard that the video game is kind of the unofficial uh, third movie, Man, if you will. Because it's they... a good game, and they just remastered it after ten years for the current consoles. Oh, maybe I'll see if I can uh, yeah. go play that. I know it you... seems like maybe it, that could be like a twenty dollar game, right? Yeah, on it, uh, PSN. I think it's like thirty normally. Uh, so hmm. you're not you're not too far off. And I know you're you're a big gamer, a big fan of remasters. You know, don't play the original. Oh. Play the play the newer one that looks prettier. Re- the remasters, the pretty ones. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't have a lot of opinions about Ghostbusters. So I don't know if this is going to be a kid's movie, if they're focusing on kids, or if they just – we all know that the kid actors in Stranger Things can hold their own, so they don't have to be in a kid-friendly stuff, if you will. But uh, the title's cool, Afterlife. That makes sense. We're talking about ghosts here. So, yeah, I'm kind of going in with, uh, how, with a little bit of apathy. Well, how many people, how many Ghostbusters are going to be in it? How many of the old ones? You know, again, Harold Ramis has mm-hmm. passed. It's, it's Bill Murray and um, Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd is crazy, even though, I, even though I've been told that I should look past his, un- his un- Uncle Dan's craziness. Yeah, and then um, uh, I, forget, uh, I forget the other ones. But, I mean, um, anyway, we're, we're not Ghostbusters people, as you can tell. Uh, but either way, I want to see what they bring back, you know, what they can do with it, bring in the world. But, I mean, is Finn Wolfhard's agent literally just casting him in horror, spooky, supernatural things? Because he's been <laughs> he's in Stranger getting- Things, It, This, 
what, he's getting he's getting work. I think that's all he, he his parents care about. Yeah, I mean yeah, he's he's bringing <laughs> oh, over over under. What are the odds that we see Slimer in this trailer? Oh, hundred uh, percent. Like hundred percent. All right. Uh, I I feel like maybe there if if Slimer's in the trailer, I feel like it's just gonna be a hint to him. Like it might be like maybe just a little bit of his like butt or maybe a little bit of his noise or maybe there'll just be some slime on the ground and then the camera pans up and the kids look up and then the trailer ends. So I feel like we only get we'll hint at the slimer, but we'll see. Oh, you mean in the trailer? I I yeah, meant I meant the movie. I'm sorry. I'm trailer uh, okay. I, I think you know what would be interesting is if some of the other Ghostbusters had really in this movie died. So we get like Bill Murray ghost. Well, I think that's the honestly the biggest question that people have been kind of talking about. Is Harold Ramis going to be in this movie outside of just like a photo on somebody's desk? Because, I mean, yes, it is very tacky and weird to think about bringing a dead actor back with CG as a ghost, you know, outside of maybe, well, not even Star Wars because that's a different scenario. But if if, if Harold Ramis' family maybe gave permission in some way because this movie's literally about afterlife. That's the title of the movie. It's about ghosts. So if Harold Ramis came back as a ghost, would people be okay with it? Because this is the most famous movie he's ever, he's ever been in. He's ever started. And obviously he's been successful at other avenues in Hollywood, but that's going to be my big question. Are we going to see Harold Ramis CG'd as a ghost? Uh, is it tacky? I don't know. Write in. Let me know. What do you think? Do you want to see Harold Ramis as a ghost in this movie? Well, uh, we will, we will let you know, Mike, we will all let you know. All right. But that's it for the show. It's 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 time to to call it quits and and end the day. But if people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at? Oh, it's so so easy. All you got to do is follow me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, see how you're staying warm over there outside of Fort Knox, where can they find you? Uh, outside of Fort Knight, you mean? No, I'm kidding. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Valdan, V A L D A N, or Instagram, Valdan87. Uh, you can also hit up Comic UI. Uh, people want to know about you know all the other stuff we do here, Mike, the, the, the swag, the other shows, where they can you know share this show with their friends. Where can they find all that stuff at? Oh, it's so easy to do. All you got to do is visit SuperheroSlate.com. That's the best place to find all the avenues we host our show and to get our awesome show notes. So we talked about a lot of stuff today, a lot of trailers. We got links to that six-hour Kevin Feige panel. That He's not there the whole six hours, but he's in there. So we got links to there. Uh, we got all these trailers, all these leaked uh, screenshot things. So go check it out in our show notes at SuperheroSlate.com. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and anywhere else you love to listen to your podcasts. You should be listening to us on Spotify on Spotify if you if you like to because we I want to see us pop up in some people's end of the year wrap ups because they had like a little podcast section yeah. there if you're ingesting podcasts there so if we popped up in anybody's uh, Spotify uh, wrap up send us a screenshot well, I gotta see it I gotta I, know I will tell you I have verbal confirmation we did pop up in one person's Spotify thing um, our friend Adam who listens to Ghostbusters who will be sub- promptly subscribing after this episode because we couldn't name <laughs> all the Ghostbusters so yeah send me a screenshot I'd, I'd love to see that now I, I want to like retweet it and post it. it'd be great but uh, you can like us on Facebook follow us on Twitter and Instagram and you can get merch at superhero slate.com slash store we love hearing from you please reach out let us know what you're thinking about the show if you want us to talk about stuff we talked about Ghostbusters here specifically uh, because it was requested and we love talking about stuff that you want to hear about uh, we would have gotten around to Ghostbusters probably because there's a trailer next week but now you got an extra week of Ghostbusters out of us you psychopaths so we love hearing from you please reach out and we love our super fans of the show if you want to be a super fan of the show all you got to do is share the show with a friend share the show with a buddy and DM me Twitter jokes that your children are telling uh, super fan Jim sent in a hilarious joke his uh, daughter told that did, and she did not uh, quite get the punchline of it, which made it even funnier. And I think, Chris, you might be putting that at yeah, the top well, of the show. Yeah, well, now I have so to because you, you put it at the end nah. of the show. Yeah, I got <laughs> it. <laughs> now you have to. So, uh, yeah, just uh, tune in. We love hearing from you. And see you next week, everybody. All right, bye. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. I got a joke for you, but this week, don't ruin it. Even if you know it, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, because I'm feeling you've probably heard it before. But-